Today I want to talk about my rainwater system we're putting in for our cabins in the mountains of Kentucky. We started off by having Jamie dig us a hole to bury the tank, run the lines uh, to the house and also the overflow out to the creek. Uh, having him do that wound up costing us less than renting the equipment to do it myself. When I first started off building this cabin, my intention was to hook on to the city water. I met with an excavator and one of the neighbors, and they both informed me that being at the top of the mountain, when the water gets to us, there is no pressure left. There is city water hookup at the entrance of our property. Uh, it does not have a meter. So the cost to install a meter and run the line all the way up about 1,500 feet to our first cabin was going to be close to $10,000. And my neighbor informed me that when it gets there, you may turn it on to take a shower and find there's no water. It really depends on the usage of all of the people below us. And at certain times, like when everyone gets home from work and wants to take a shower or make dinner or whatever they're doing, there may be nothing left for us. So rather than spending the money on running that pipe all the way up there and finding out it wouldn't do us any good, we opted to collect rainwater. Once we had the tank buried, it was just a matter of installing the riser on it. After I got the riser installed, I turned over to the downspouts here. This downspout pre-filter is made by Monolin, I think you say it. I ordered this through Rain Brothers LLC out of Ohio. That's where I got the tank as well. This will help pre-filter the water and keep the big stuff out, leaves, sticks, debris like that. I've got a T here on this left outlet coming out of the pre-filter. That's so that the gutter on the back of the building can come down a downspout, uh, drain into a downspout, and then it'll turn back under the house and tap into this four inch run uh, where that T is. I'm hoping to get you know the front and the back of the house both and that it's not too much for this four inch pipe to handle, but it's a pretty small roof, uh, small cabin, so I think it will be all right. There is a gasket that you put in the existing hole in that tank. There's an inlet and an outlet that come pre-drilled. That is meant to receive either a Schedule 40 four inch PVC, or in this case it's Schedule 35, but I used the bell side to shove through the gasket. That worked out pretty well. After getting the, uh, I'll call it the intake, <laughs> the water line that fills the tank, I needed to drill uh, the one inch line into the tank that will be hooked to the pump. All right, so this is a 160 PSI, I'm gonna call it PEX. I don't think it really is, uh, but very similar product. This is what goes into the house. We've gotta convert it to a Schedule 40 PVC to go through the tank, and that's what will be plumbing into the uh, well pump. So uh, I've got this metal barb fitting that needs to go in here. We'll have to heat it up and shove it in there and we'll use two hose clamps on it to hold it tight. Uh, to convert this to PVC, I'm using this uh, galvanized coupler in the middle. And the reason being, um, you don't want to have a male metal fitting inside a female PVC. You want it to be metal. This metal will expand more than the PVC. And if this piece was made out of PVC or these two were like one piece, a female to a uh, pipe thread to female glue on, um, 
this will expand and crack it. So if you do it this way, if this expands, uh, it just gets bigger around the PVC uh, and you won't have any cracks. So uh, Josh the plumber taught me that. I didn't come up with that on my own. It's a, a real thing that people smarter than me know how to do. Friday. We got here Monday and we'll be leaving tomorrow morning. I am determined to get this rainwater system done. Uh, at least the underground part. We've got the excavator there digging the overflow right now. It is almost 11 o'clock in the morning. I am making my fourth trip to the hardware store for parts. When you got a remote property like this, it is a long drive to and from the hardware store. So, We'll get this done today. It is supposed to rain for the next five days and fill that tank up, which is good. Uh, we're not ready to use the water yet, but if you have an underground tank, I don't care if it's plastic or even concrete, that's full of water. Um, take my glasses off here, pass a car. It has the potential to float and it will do that um, because it's full of air. So we want to get this uh, tank full of water, take advantage of the next five days of rain so we don't come back in a few weeks for another build trip and find that it's floated up out of the ground. At about a foot down, I took a one inch electrical conduit, PVC. I put that from the side of the riser, I put it in there and I ran it back to a box we had mounted under the deck. Uh, and then we went ahead and backfilled the whole thing on that side so we could get started on the overflow out the other end. The overflow is pretty straightforward. It just goes on the other side of the tank. There's a hole drilled in it, just like there was for the inlet. Uh, we go down this trench, shoot off in the creek. Pete's installing a T here that helps with the turbulence in the tank. Uh, and then we went ahead and backfilled it with the rest of the sand. Again, that really helps, uh, you know, ground pressure shove something into the tank. Uh, it doesn't shove a rock or a root or something. Uh, it's got a little buffer all the way around it uh, that helps. Uh, we'll get the rest of this backfilled. The last order of business for the outside part of the system is to hang a gutter. We've got to have something to collect the water. So uh, I happen to own a gutter company. So I also happen to have an extra gutter machine in my shop. I understand that probably no one else in the world does. So these gutters just come out the end of the machine, kind of like a uh, Play-Doh Fun Factory, I always say. We crimp the end caps on with a special tool that just uh, crimps it to the end, and then we've got to put sealant in there to make it waterproof. Always install your hangers first. That's uh, something I see people every now and again trying to tack the gutter up and get them in afterwards. But this will, it, it provides a lot of rigidity to the gutter, just having them hooked in the front and laid in the gutter so that if you're doing like this, a 50 foot gutter, it's not terribly long, but it'll uh, uh, make it a lot easier to hang. This is a downspout punch, uh, just kind of works like a clamp. This is a three by four downspout, an oversized one. So we uh, clamp that in, it punches the hole out and uh, we'll put an outlet in there to hook the downspout to later. See here, 
this is where that big tank was. And now we've got our uh, downspout to fill it up. We've got the gutter on the house here. That's pretty awesome. It is supposed to rain for like the next five days. So this should have a good chance to fill the tank up, keep it from floating. And most importantly, when we get back, we're gonna work on the inside part of the system and we should have some water soon. That'll be great.